Welcome back to Hoops HD's ongoing championship week video notebooks day number two. 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 Day number two. It is, it is day. You, you got to remember, Chad, the first day is day zero. Okay. Yes. We always start at zero when you count upwards. That's <laughs> yeah. David logic. Uh, I'm your host, Chad Sherwood, joined by John Salika, David Griggs, Joe B. Fortson with us as well for this podcast. And what we are going to be doing this show is reviewing all the conference tournament action previewing the conference tournament that's coming up on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be updating our survival board, a few other fun things. But we, before we start, we'll start with a little bit of news and notes, especially now that we are no longer doing Hoops HD reports. Uh, oh, we're for not? Rest, well, for the rest I, I of the thought we did one yesterday. No more going forward, David. Oh, oh. Because okay. we've got these shows instead. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, uh, so, there's no reason to do the Hoops HD reports anymore. We're, we've got the video notebook. But we did just see a show. Uh, why don't we do a, some news and notes since we're not doing the Hoops HD report anymore? Dave, why don't you just take over? I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, we just saw a really good game couple in the ACC here, Joby. Uh, Duke Wake Forest was not supposed to be a good game. No. But, uh, but uh, I saw a shot go up by Wake and go three quarters of the way down, and they won the game and stormed the court. No? Yeah, I, I, I was <sighs> – I was furious with ESPN going, really, you're going to put, you're going to relegate a Florida State Virginia Tech game, which is excellent, outstanding game. And that even goes to overtime. You're going to relegate that to the U. And just because, and Zion's out, why are you showing this blowout? Wow. Um, it was a game of runs. Wake would go on a 10 0 run. Duke would come back with an 8 0 run. It was a lot of fun to watch. <sighs> Sloppy at times, without a doubt. Uh, Duke did not put their best effort in. But then the final – yeah. So what happens? Eh, Wake's trying their best. They're not going to get – and then a sideline violation almost like Louisville last year against <laughs> Virginia happens. My goodness, he ste- the white steps over the line. And while talking to Barrett, and they give it back to Wake. Wake has a final shot. And then Childers, who'd been hot all day – Air balls it, but air balls it to a teammate. Ball bounces around. Desperation shot misses. Desperation shot again, and it bounces not once, not twice, not three times, not four times. Five times on the rim rolls out as the horn is sounding. Oh, or five times in, in five different areas. Like, yes. Uh, Joby, let me ask you, though. White for, for Duke. All it seems to be is a guy that knows how to miss three-pointers and turn over the ball. Why is this guy getting so much playing time? Because K, little known secret, K doesn't recruit depth. All these That's what the problem with one and done. When you get all these guys going out, yeah, you know, all these guys coming in next year, next year, yeah, you know, with Reddish, Williamson, and Barrett gone, they're going to have to get a brand-new group. They'll have Delorier maybe and some others. Uh, O'Connell, but they don't. The little sn- sneaky uh, secret about Duke is their depth is not very good. They uh, do not have depth uh, compared I think you're... to a other type of one seed, and you saw it without Zion. In. And David, the other two other big games tonight that have already gone final as we record this, which is a little after ten o'clock Eastern. Uh, Florida State was down fourteen, uh, came storming back to get Vatek in overtime. Yeah, nice win for uh, the Knowles. Uh, they've really been playing well lately. I think that's 10 out of 11 or 10 out of 12 or something. If I was actually good, I'd have that stat right in front of me, but I don't. But still really, like, good latter or second half of conference play for Florida State. They're red hot. They're I think uh, I've been having them as a protected seed the last couple of weeks just in my own personal bracket. Um, I know that they were at home, but I still think that that's a protected seed caliber win. Yeah. And Stalika, the game right before we started recording this just went final. Minnesota, and real nice home win over Purdue, really helped their profile. Yeah, I did say about a week ago, just winning at Wisconsin alone wasn't going to cut the mustard for the Gophers. So getting a win at home against Purdue is certainly going to help. And that's following up their win at Northwestern, which at least gives them another victory away from home. So the Gophers. Not out of the woods yet, but definitely a big step forward tonight. Still, like, I know you're not at home. What is that on the shelf behind you there? It looks like you're in some sort of air raid bunker. 
<laughs> no, this is the bracket bunker right here. It's not yeah. the puppet bunker. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, just just remind everybody, David Griggs is locked in the puppet bunker. By the way, David, you said how we is weren't. It? No, we're we're yeah, unloaded. David, you haven't been able to get out of there for, for three days. You should be locked in. Yeah. Um, but a couple of games, real quickly, of note: a Buffalo with a yeah. squeezed out a three point road win at Ohio to keep their their streak going. VCU dominating win at George Mason by, uh, I think they. Won by 36, and, and Mason only scored 35 points, or vice versa. It was yeah, just, yeah, uh, it was 71 36, Chad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. Uh, good, as we, good as George we George Mason team, too. That's as we re, yeah, as we record this, a few other games going on, we're not gonna be able to chance to discuss them because they won't go final. But uh, Kansas is down big at Oklahoma, and Kentucky Ole Miss in a tight battle as uh, Alabama up 10 on Auburn, as well as we record this. Uh, but check those scores in the morning when you're watching the podcast. Yeah. Let's get to the important stuff, though, right? Right. The knockout games. Yeah. All uh, right. Let's go ahead and if we give me half a second here, I should be able to pull up some brackets on the screen. And if not, then uh, I don't know. Here. How about the Big South tournament? Uh, how about it? Um, if we're just opening it up here, Longwood, interesting story. We were kind of excited about them, especially back in November and December, the, the start they had to the season. And they at times looked like they were going to be competitive in the Big South. Uh, the season, you know, being eliminated today to first time Hampton. Uh, but but um, that was one of the better games of the night. Upstate yeah. Charleston Southern was exciting for a half. Um, and then the 400 people – made the uh, Charleston Southern's arena look full. <laughs> I love that place. It is so tiny. Uh, they, they get into the semis, and uh, i got to be honest, Presby, Asheville, I watched maybe 30 seconds of it. That's all that was worth watching. That game was over about five minutes into it. Asheville was a, had an awful season this year. Other than beating <laughs> Upstate twice, which gave them the 10 seed, they would have been uh, even you know, would have been a serious contender for our centenary award for the worst team in D1. Uh, Stalika, day off tomorrow, but then we hit the quarterfinals now, and uh, now the conference gets determined to get serious, though. This day was just a little like, preview day, wasn't it? A little bit of a preview, but by the same time, I would be very surprised if either of the big three of Campbell, Radford, and Winthrop were to lose early. So Gardner-Webb and High Point, kind of a pick em in that game. Right, and yeah, and, and Joby also here. Yeah, these three winners today, they don't really stand a chance on Thursday. No, I mean, <laughs> it's because I think the Big South has got some strength. I mean, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, obviously we talked Campbell and Radford. Wit was pretty good. Gardner-Webb dominated that Wake Forest team that almost beat Duke. Uh, yeah. You know, so yeah. it would be really interesting. Good, good Gardner call, Gardner-Webb. Good call. Like, yeah, they went to Furman, almost won. I mean, it, it, Gardner-Webb at times looked pretty good. Yeah, I mean – all right, let's uh, let the other two other conferences in action today. We also was first round or play in day in the Patriot League, which should be coming up right here on the screen. And this is a conference where I kind of pay, may want to pay attention to these two teams. We have seen Holy Cross do it before, and they, you know, out of the nine or the 10 seed, uh, tied for last place. Uh, out of the last place again, they go on the road to beat Lafayette. Uh, David, let me start with you. Can Holy Cross do it again? Four road wins in, in four, over, over the course of a week. Well, and a half one here. of the things you would say, they're going into Bucknell, who Bucknell was good all the way up until about three weeks ago, and then they just sort of went down in flames. Uh, so, you know, with Holy Cross coming in with a little bit of momentum, uh, maybe, I don't know, we've seen them do it before, like you said, but this is a conference with a lot of parity, generally speaking. Although, well, the last two years it hasn't. Bucknell's pretty much run away from everybody else. But, but this year, I mean, you, you know, even a, a team like Navy, who finished fifth, looked really good at times. And Colgate, while they were while they won the league, they didn't exactly dominate it. And it is worth noting that Holy Cross was one of the teams that uh, beat Bucknell towards the second half of February. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Joby, be you the other winners tonight. Do they have any shot of, uh, over at, at Colgate uh, after yeah, the win of the roof? Yeah. Colgate, I, I, I feel like Colgate's really got it going on. I like these top three mm -hmm. teams in this league. I think the top three teams in this league could give – could be that at miracle March Madness team, as this conference has shown in the past with Lehigh and Bucknell doing damage in the tournament. Um, I don't see Colgate losing. Uh, I really don't. I, I think, unlike Bucknell, I think Colgate's playing pretty well right now. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, we had one other conference in action today. That was the Horizon League. 
the first two of its four quarterfinals uh, saw Wright State. Now, David, I got I threw this stuff out there on Twitter. I did a little double check this year. Last year, the one seed lost in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Two years ago, it lost the quarterfinals. Three years ago was Valpo, who the format that year got a buy into the semis but lost to Green Bay in that semifinal game. It has been four years since the one seed won a single game in the Horizon League tournament. This is ridiculous, but congratulations Uh, to the Raiders. They did it. Yeah, and they avoid Illinois Chicago, who beat them twice. So uh, Wright State gets to wear white up in Detroit because they're the first-place team. I knew that game was devastating for Valpo, but I didn't know it was devastating to the point where they would just leave the conference after that. Yeah, they were pretty. <laughs> they were there one more year, but yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, they had game, that injury too. Uh, you you hated to see that. The other game, it, it, it was a close game there. That, that Green Bay UIC game, it was right up until the very end. Uh, so it's a nice win by Green Bay picking that up. I think they trailed a lot of that game actually. Uh, they did. Yeah, they they were down for most of it. Uh, but they 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 go and play Wright State on Monday, but. Uh, Joby, tomorrow night, the other two quarterfinals, Detroit at NKU, and a really interesting Youngstown and Oakland game, I think. Yeah, I, I think that, well, you know, the fact we're dealing with Detroit, you know, I'd still like to think North, the Norse are just simply the better team will do it, but that home court advantage is interesting. Well, you got, Oakland, you got, Antoine, you got Antoine Davis, who was one of the yeah. top scorers in the nation for that Detroit right. team. So yeah, the, uh, you have those factors coming into play. And then remember, Oakland is just right around the corner there too you know it's it, in Oakland I feel like gets a crowd going whereas I don't know if Youngstown's gonna if the guys are gonna drive the four hours from three to four hours from Youngstown to actually for a quarter or for a quarter final um, <laughs> yeah I, I gotta think Oakland is gonna have it tomorrow but you know maybe those penguins can show something I would say the good news, at least as far as Wright State goes, they won't have to worry about Illinois Chicago after getting swept by them during the regular season. They did manage a split against Green Bay, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Green Bay, a team that has shown some life over time. They, this team beat Belmont during the regular season. So uh, Wright State better watch out for that Monday night in, in, up in Detroit. Yeah. Uh, David, we got two other conferences to start tomorrow night, and we got to start with our favorite conference here at Hoops yes, HD. we do. It is quarterfinal oh, day in the Northeast yeah. Conference. It is. And, uh, Chad, you might remember this. We ran a poll on Twitter. Uh, what sporting event was bigger, the Super Bowl or this tournament? And unanimously, it was voted that it was this tournament. This tournament was unanimously. This, this tournament, bigger deal than the Super Bowl. I mean. All, all two people that voted, voted for this tournament. That's all yes. I got to well, say. Well, I mean, we, we, the voting was restricted. I mean, you just <laughs> didn't want anybody to be able to vote. I only tagged certain people that I thought would, would contribute. But it was unanimous yes. among everybody that voted. This tournament was bigger. Uh, Games tomorrow night. Bryant, the eight seed, is at St. Francis, Pennsylvania. Robert Morris, the four seed, hosting St. Francis, Brooklyn. Wagner, who was very good early this season, fell apart late at Fairleigh Dickinson, who actually tied SFPA for the regular season title. LIU Brooklyn had a Sacred Heart team who's had one of their best seasons ever this year. Right. Uh, so uh, let's start with uh, Sleek. Let me start with you. Any upsets tomorrow in terms of the road teams winning? If I were to pick any upset, I'd probably go with uh, defending champion LIU Brooklyn. But I certainly wouldn't be picking St. Francis against a a perennial favorite like uh, Robert Morris, for example. Um, It's interesting. A couple good storylines here. St. Francis, PA, I don't remember the last time they were in the tournament, but it's been a while. Uh, they, they're typically good. I don't remember the last time they even finished first. So one of their better teams in a while. Um, but this league, as it always does every year, kind of seesawed up and down. SFPA had been in first place. Uh, St. Francis Brooklyn was in first place for a while. Robert Morris was in first place for a while. Wagner, as you said, I don't know if they were ever on the top of the league, although I think they were. Fairly early, early, very early, very early. They was were, up yeah. there for a week. So all of these teams sort of fluctuated in, and there isn't a whole lot of difference between one and seven here. There, yeah. there really isn't. Uh, I, just I forget the exact year, but I think it was the early 90s, the last time S- St. Francis PA made it, and that was when uh, notable coach Jim Barron Sr. was actually the 
head coach for the Red Flash. Yep, John, thanks. That was the 1991 NCAA tournament. In fact, this is lit first time they've, they've won or tied for the NEC regular season crown since that 91 year. The, the well, good so. news is the conference can already write the ticket for the champion that, you know, go ahead and buy the plane ticket to Dayton. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're right on that, Joey. Short of yeah. like some really bad teams. Yeah, winning. even St. Francis, PA. Yeah, you know, I mean, oh yeah, St. Francis, well, PA. I'm mean, like, you know, I, we talked about it yesterday. Would IUPUI maybe get out of Dayton before St. Francis, PA? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, you know, that shows how extreme it is. I'll tell you what. Let's go go through each of you here with a pick to win this conference tournament. I'm going to start with myself here and. Uh, Although I think there's going to be some great games, this conference is so much fun. I'm actually going to go with the one seed. I'm going to go with SFPA to win it. Uh, they, they have – every time they've ever tied for the conference regular season championship, they've won the conference tournament uh, in their history. So only once. But, David? Um, I'm going to go with Sacred Heart. Nice pick. Well, never, been, never been to the big dance. Yeah. Uh, Joby? Yeah, I, I'm I'm going with you, Chad. I, I know chalk is boring, but I think I think St. Francis PA is better than STFU. You know, oh, that's St. Stephen F. Austin. Sorry, uh, SFU. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, uh, um, one of the things, like if it unfolds, uh, I think SFPA is going to have some trouble with Robert Morris mm-hmm. and Sacred Heart might get to host this championship game. Well, you got to remember, there is reseeding here. So if there's an upset in this 7-2 or the 6-3 game, uh, SFPA, Robert Morris, may not be until the finals. But uh, yeah. and Sacred Heart uh, uh, does, doesn't have much of a – I guess it's a, it's a band box sort of thing, but I don't think of Sacred Heart as having that intensity, willing to just – go nuts fan base like a robert morris for instance well we'll be able to set zach on location for that uh yeah uh, good for I, I, zach. yeah uh, but but well, sleek we're, we're can i get your i try to get sleek we'll make it here, it's greenwich <laughs> i mean sacred heart's essentially greenwich <laughs> sleek you gotta pick going, to win this. oh if he's going to the game we've got to we've got to do something okay yeah. david we really gotta get sleek as picking and keep moving <laughs> i think it's fair to say that this is rarely a conference where chalk holds so i'm gonna go with uh robert morris to win the nec here all right. Let's take a look at one other conference that starts tomorrow. It is first round day in the Ohio Valley Conference, a pair of games that do not involve Belmont, Murray State, and not even also Pure Jacksonville State. Now we've got SAU Edwardsville in their, I believe, their second ever OVC tournament against Moorhead, Tennessee Martin against Eastern Illinois, games that uh, should have absolutely no meaning after Thursday's quarterfinal <laughs> action. But uh, let's go with that. Uh, Two questions here. First of all, let's sleek. Let me start with you this time. Any ups, either upsets in either of these two games in terms of the seeding? And number two, who wins this entire event? It wouldn't shock me if uh, SIU Edwardsville actually pulled off an upset because Moorhead has actually been missing one of their key players, Lamontre Harris, for the past couple games. But even then, I still see a team like uh, Belmont. They don't have the quite the star power of John Morant for Murray State, but I think they have the more complete team. So I'll go with the Bruins to uh, come out of the OVC. I actually agree with you. I think Edwardsville does pull the upset. I I think Eastern Illinois, Tessie Martin's a coin flip. I'm going to go with Murray State over Belmont in the final, though. I just think that – I just got a feeling about them. I don't know. Uh, Joby, how about you? Um, I think that uh, I'm going to go with Stalika and say Belmont. It's going to – but the one element of chalk, I think, that changes, I think this is very chalky, especially, hey, you have a ladder that, that leads to that. But I think Jacksonville State has a real shot against the roadshow that is John Moran. Uh, yeah, especially I'm given really who their head coach is, uh, David. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and Jack State waxed them, albeit at home earlier in yeah. the year. Belmont went to Murray and won. Murray is, is really good, but they haven't always blasted teams. Like, they sweated out Austin P on their home court recently. Um, so, like, I, I just don't I, – I agree with Staliga that Belmont's the more complete team. I've got a third question. If Murray State does win this tournament and beats Belmont, is Belmont – we all know they're on the bubble. Are they inside or outside of it on Selection Sunday? I personally think that there'll probably be enough bids stolen from various conferences that they're probably going to end up on the outside looking in, but I think it's a very good argument to make. Yeah. Uh, Joby, I don't know what you think. Uh, no, I think they're on the outside for the mere fact that 
they really need, let's see how Lipscomb does. I know that sounds funny because there is a transitive property. They swept Lipscomb. That's a big deal. Lipscomb's being hurt by the lack of TCU performance because TCU's slipping out. I know that the, this is that domino effect that I talk about on podcasts from time to time. Belmont's been hurt by that. They don't have really a good quality win. And Murray State's not it. Murray State, uh, Murray State, if they win, if they lose, I think we all agree Murray State's an NIT team. Right. Um, Another thing that hurt Belmont was, and you just never know what you're watching earlier in the year. I think it was the Green Bay that beat them. And then, uh, but you're still feeling pretty good about them based yeah, on everything. Good team. You know. 12, uh, but the two losses the to Jack. The that gets them is not going to be happy. Yeah. And, and I know it's not, you know, you know, most of your, none of you are watching this live and all the games are going to have gone final, but uh, take a look at what does happen in the final score in the Knights Colorado State Utah State game. Uh, Utah State is actually in a one-point game late as we record this. Should they lose this game to Colorado State, that may open up a spot for somebody because that is a team right there on the bubble that's struggling this evening. Well, and Auburn's come back from the dead to take a four-point lead. So yeah. Yeah. Now, to answer some of your earlier questions, the only three teams that have actually beaten Belmont this year were Jack State twice at Green Bay, at Purdue. They did win at UCLA, but – and Western Kentucky, but unfortunately, both of those teams have underperformed this year. All right, let's move over to our survival board now. And uh, Salika, let me ask you this. Can you explain to everybody what this survival board is? It's right up there on the website. There's also a conference tournament tab where you can see all these brackets we've just been looking at. But the survival board's up there. If you click on it, what, what are we looking at here? Well, we have uh, four groups of teams. Now, one of them we haven't filled out yet because we don't have any conference tournament champions yet so they will eventually be bold in all caps but the second category is teams that are currently in bold that are going to be making the tournament no matter what happens between now and selection Sunday the third group of teams is teams in italics that still will be considered they do have a pathway but if you're in a regular font you lose you're done all right, and uh, and David, we have confirmed that the selection committee has the availability to access this in the yes. in the room. Yeah, because they have internet, they they can they can come right on here and access this board, so they know what they need to be doing. Okay. Now heading into the day, you can see here there were eight teams still alive in the Horizon League, for example, and there were a total of three hundred and thirty-one teams available with a ch with a chance to win the national championship. Make yeah, the they're still tournament. playing. And they, I mean, they, they get to play until somebody beats them. So let's see what happened as a result of tonight's games. Okay. Oh, we're down to 324, yeah. 324. So you look again, we mentioned the Horizon League there. Let's scroll down to them. Only six teams yeah. left. UIC, right. IUPUI, no longer available to win. Right, and they weren't in italics, so they came off. Now, had they been in italics, you would not, they would not have been removed. Is that right? That is correct. So if and like a team like – Had they would not have been removed. So, so we have, for example, Belmont in italics. When they play, they don't play tomorrow night, even though the OVC starts. Yeah. When they play, if they lose, they're, they're not necessarily coming off of that board. Right, yeah. All right. Uh, I guess on that note, uh, David, I, I want to address something with you, actually. Um, well, last yeah. night, you did something – that, you know, as I thought about it, which just made no sense whatsoever. What are you talking about? Well, you said to tweet out to try to solve the problem of what was going on with the potential for quarters coming yeah, out. Yeah, we don't want quarters. I don't see why that doesn't make any sense. But you tweeted to Willie Nelson. Well, he's a singer-songwriter. He could, you know, maybe write a song about now, it. Or now, something. Dave, Dave, we've decided that we're going to solve the problems in college basketball, but we've got we to get these problems solved by people who can do things. Now, the, okay. problem, the problem I think we well, need to uh, What do you – Willie Nelson can't do things? I, I, I don't think he could do anything in college basketball. What does he have to do with college basketball? You know, well, he did – now that you mention it, Chad, I hate to admit it, but he did not <laughs> respond to my tweet. Well, um, well David, I, I – Maybe I should have reached out to someone else. We, we were discussing the Horizon League tonight. I think it is atrocious that they're playing these games in Detroit. They should be playing them on campus sites where they belong. And I decided that we need to reach out to somebody that can get things fixed. So, yeah, I agree with this. Like, you know, these under the radar conferences, you, you know, they don't have the budgets. They don't have, and it isn't, first of all, the, most importantly, it just isn't fair to the team that had the best season. They deserve to play at home. Uh, the regular season should feed into it to, to give them the best chance. I, I agree with this. Okay. So I want to send this, so I want to have to give somebody who could actually get things done, fix this problem. So okay. there we are. Kim Kardashian West. Wait uh, a minute, Chad. 
Wright State won tonight and is the one seed, but now has to go to Detroit for the rest of the Prize League tournament. This tourney should be on campus Check. sites. You can fix anything. Please Check. fix this. Chet, you're tweeting to Kim Kardashian West. Yeah, she's going to fix the problems. How is she going to fix the problem? Well, what else does she do? That's a good <laughs> point. Well, yeah, what does she do? Like, what does, like if, you, if she were to submit a resume, what would be on it? Fixing the horizon. Like, what employable <laughs> skills does she have? It has been well, tweeted. May, maybe Kim, Kylie Jenner just out. became the first, the youngest billionaire <laughs> ever uh, could hire. There, there we go. Well, Kim, we'll be waiting for Kim's response now. Kim, help us out. Fix the I horizon. Don't think... you, know you can do it. Oh, wow. On that note, let's go to any final thoughts for the evening. Uh, Joby, let me start with you. Yeah, Utah State and Colorado State are still tied. Every time I pay attention <laughs> to this team, they stink. They still stink. I am sorry. They're not NCAA caliber worthy. I do not care if I am called nasty names by their fans because their fans have shown that they are not nice people anyway. You may get thrown into a, into, into a fire extinguisher <laughs> as well, so you better be careful. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, uh, Salika. So, so far tonight for teams like uh, Minnesota and Oklahoma, it's shaping up to be a good night, not just because of taking care of their own business against Purdue and Kansas respectively, but – they also got some help from Butler tonight, who did cool off a, a red-hot Xavier team and ended the Musketeers' five-game winning streak. So Xavier looking more and more like they'll probably have to win the Big East tournament to get an NCAA bid themselves right now. Yeah, good point. It was a you know, Xavier team that I thought they picked up this win would have been seriously under consideration, but they, they had no room for error. It's, well, it's not bad to lose to Butler. It's bad when you have all those other prop, other bad things on your profile you certainly cannot lose to the johnnies at home this weekend i will say that I don't think I, it matters <laughs> I, I think they can lose to the johnnies because i think they need to win three games to get in the NCAA tournament yeah. this, that this game this weekend is not one of those three now yeah. i still say that because you don't want to wind up in the first four on uh, wednesday because that would make the path even harder because then you're facing either marquette or villanova who's going to be rested come thursday and i'd be wrong you would need four wins in that case so you are that, that you do make it right that is a little bit correct there uh david why don't you finish us off the night though uh, to, uh just another really big night both not so much the conference tournaments but um a lot of teams that that really needed wins getting the minnesota i think that kind of lands them in there uh oklahoma as well if they're able to hold on and, uh, you know, another big development is Utah State just going to completely sink uh, what they did for themselves over the weekend because Colorado State is, is, is as bad as Joby says Utah State is. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, yeah, quickly, uh, Tennessee also is up 20 points on Mississippi State at home right now. The game is close at halftime. A really, really impressive performance by Tennessee tonight over a good Mississippi yeah. State. They want that one seed. I mean, they really do. Right I don't know they can get, get it. it. Yeah. I don't. Well, they they need LSU to lose to get it. So it's well, not, no, oh, the one. I thought you meant the overall one. Oh, oh, I mean, oh, oh. oh I mean, mean, they are a one seed in my book right now. If they do continue to do to Mississippi State what they're doing, yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. The tournament will play out itself out a little bit, but Tennessee's doing the job. Well, I guess on that note, I do want to thank everyone for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow night, even later than this podcast tonight, when all the games are over for another. Uh, championship week video notebook and every night from then on uh, I believe that David needs a little bit of help in the puppet bunker so if you have extra food please send it to him just let me out of here like I've talked to Joe Lenardi he's not in an actual bunker he's in a studio <laughs> he actually goes home at night I don't know like, I he's think got, he's in a bunker David you gotta you if gotta he be wants just, to go out to lunch he can we'll, we'll, we'll find about we'll, we'll think about getting you lunch tomorrow but on that note on behalf of Joby Fortson John Salika the puppet. I'm Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow night.